Tasmanian tiger, easily distinguished by his straight, unjointed tail, is also a dangerous opponent, though, like the devil, is now very rare. The passenger pigeon is one of the most populous birds in the world. However, due to its popularity as a game bird, it has been hunted to the brink of extinction. Get to know her now, with the furry fringe around her ears, her squat legs, because within our lifetimes, the northern white rhino could be gone forever. Humankind must know that once extinct, a species is lost forever. Extinction is the complete disappearance of a species from the face of planet Earth. We've heard this many times in news reports, TV shows, and other YouTube videos like this one. But why is it really such a bad thing? If you know anything about extinction, you know that 99% of all the species that have lived on Earth have gone extinct, and that the average lifespan of a species on planet Earth is only 10 million years. Why then are the extinctions that we hear about today such a bad thing? Well, to understand that, we need to understand the types of extinction and their consequences. And in this video, we're going to do just that. When something really bad happens on planet Earth that causes the extinction of a large number of species, it's called a mass extinction. This can be caused by anything, from an asteroid to the entire planet spontaneously catching on fire. This kind of mass extinction has happened five times in the history of our planet. But the most well-known mass extinction was the one that happened to the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. A planet on fire completely eradicated the dinosaurs. Their rule of 165 million years was ended in a flash by a single cruel act of nature. This kind of extinction is the Earth's way of starting afresh. The death of the dinosaurs started a chain of dominoes that led to our evolution and humanity dominating the world as we know it today. If the dinosaurs weren't gone, humans wouldn't be where we are now. Imagine trying to get to school with a velociraptor chasing you. But mass extinction isn't the only kind of extinction. And the species that we hear about disappearing today aren't vanishing because the earth is on fire. That kind of extinction is called local extinction. And we need to understand it to understand the consequences that it brings. One of the most well-known local extinction events in recent history happened on the island of Tasmania in 1935. The thylacine was a species of marsupial native to mainland Australia, Papua New Guinea and Tasmania. This animal thrived on the lands of mainland Australia. But when settlers came, they introduced dingoes, which outcompeted the thylacine and forced it into its last refuge on the island of Tasmania. By the 1920s, sightings of the thylacine were extremely rare. Despite this rarity, when farmers of the island noticed the disappearance of chicken and sheep from their farms, they immediately blamed the aggressive Tasmanian tiger. The Van Diamonds Land Company introduced a bounty of one pound per Tasmanian tiger head. They ended up paying out 2,184 bounties, but it's suspected that a lot more tigers than that were killed. The last known wild Tasmanian tiger was shot in 1931 when it was sighted on a farmer's farm. It's been almost a hundred years since then and not a single Tasmanian tiger has been seen. This animal is extinct from the wild. The thylacine wasn't just a relic, it was an essential part of the ecosystem and its disappearance had lasting consequences. We've all studied about trophic levels at school, but just to jog your memory, here's how they work. Grass grows. Deer eat grass, and wolf eat deer. When the wolf poops, it fertilizes the grass, and the grass grows. Once the grass grows, deer can eat it, and the wolf can eat the deer. This cycle is what keeps an ecosystem stable. But when an animal like the thylacine that's essential to the ecosystem disappears, it causes something called a trophic cascade. The best way to understand a trophic cascade is to imagine that you're an otter. Otters may look cute, but they're voracious predators. They like to live in kelp forests, and their food of choice are sea urchins. Now, as an otter, you like to stay healthy, and the best way to do that is to eat as much food as you can. So you spend your time in the kelp forests, catching as many urchins as possible to eat. Sadly, all around the world, your populations have started to drop due to pollution and your habitat's destruction. And now that you're not there to keep the urchins' population in check, they take over. A sea urchin's food of choice is kelp. And now that you aren't there with your otter buddies to watch over the urchin population, 
they start to devour the kelp at an unprecedented rate. The kelp forests of the ocean serve as a sanctuary for juvenile fish. When they start their lives, fish aren't ready to face the horrors of the open ocean. So, until they're old enough, they take up residence among the kelp's leaves. But now, because of the decline of the kelp forests, juvenile fish have nowhere to go and have to face the open ocean with nowhere to hide. So this slow extinction of the otters has a cascading effect on the trophic levels below them. Their prey, the urchins, have a population explosion which causes the destruction of kelp forests. This in turn hinders the life cycles of fish because now the juvenile fish have nowhere to go. A trophic cascade is one of the worst things that can happen to an ecosystem and it has long lasting consequences. Animals that are essential to the ecosystem, like the otter, are called keystone species and so many keystone species are facing extinction today. Like vultures who are essential scavengers in the ecosystems that they reside in. Their populations are dwindling which has a serious impact on the way that carcasses are decomposed when they are not there to eat the leftovers of the carcasses hunted by larger animals. The carcasses are left out in the open to rot which can lead to increased disease among the denizens of the area. There are so many animals that have already gone extinct and even more are facing extinction today. If the disappearance of the tiny otter can have such horrible consequences, imagine what would happen if any of the animals that are facing extinction today disappeared. One thing is for sure, the consequences will be astronomical. And with so many species facing extinction now, either due to human activity or ecological pressures, it begs the question, could humans go extinct? I mean, if you look at it on a geological timescale, humans have only been around for 200,000 years, which is nothing, a mere blip in Earth's vast timeline. And we're not exactly helping our case. Because of us, the Earth is warming, ice caps are melting, and pollution levels are at an all-time high. The oceans are filled with plastic, and the rivers with chemicals from factories. The planet is being destroyed, and we sit here doing nothing about it. We may be the first species in history to cause our own mass extinction. And it's not just pollution. Nuclear war or extreme weather events could be our demise. There's no telling what the repercussions could be for our treatment of the planet. Who knows, maybe in 3000 years, the last copy of this video will be destroyed on a server farm because there are no humans to keep the internet running. Or somebody will be watching this in 3 million years on some historical tape laughing at me for even considering that humans wouldn't persevere. If there's one thing we should learn from extinctions, it's that life finds a way. The current rate of extinction is alarming and human activity is a major factor. But there's still hope. By learning about conservation efforts and taking steps to reduce our environmental footprint, we can make a difference, both in the lifespans of other creatures facing extinction today and our own. The best thing we can do to ensure that life presses on is to undo the damage that we've done as a species and to ensure that the ecosystems that created us continue to persevere for millions of years to come. It's our planet and if we are the ones with the ability to destroy it, then it's our responsibility to protect it. That's too dramatic.